In my last video in the Debbie Collier case, I talked about Debbie's missing minutes in the timeline before she arrived to the Family Dollar Store in Clayton, Georgia. I also talked about the bizarre Venmo amount and the cryptic message, and that maybe the wording isn't as sinister as we thought. And we're still waiting on authorities to confirm if it was even Debbie that sent it. Also in my last video, I talked about the potential connection between the Venmo amount and where she was parked or where her van was last found. The bizarre part Part is she was heading southbound from the family dollar store only her vehicle was found northbound and on an old logging road is what is reported and the van was found with the door unlocked well I found some more information I'm going to take you on a little deep dive showing more connections to all of this and some interesting information I found about Andrew Debbie's daughter's boyfriend and a potential connection to the place near where Debbie was found so now let's get into it Debbie's van was captured by surveillance camera at 2.17 p.m. in Tallulah Falls. She was going over 13 miles per hour over the speed limit. Question was, was she in a hurry? There's at least a 15 minute gap from the time on that camera until the time Debbie arrives at the family dollar store. Why? Did Debbie stop somewhere? Did she drive around for a bit? There are minutes that are unaccounted for. So she arrives at the store at 2.55 p.m. I had questioned in my last video if she had sat in the lot, but now there's new footage. What's weird is we see more weaving in the lane like I mentioned in my last video. And she arrives in the parking lot, she parks in the lane for 10 seconds, she doesn't choose the empty spots beside her, she goes past that one vehicle and then parks, and then waits, and then moves up to an, the empty spot in front of the dollar store. So Debbie goes into the store, she purchases some items, she checks out, and then she goes into the parking lot and sits and waits for 10 minutes. At 3.17 p.m., a Venmo was sent to Debbie's daughter, Amanda, and then her phone was turned off. Now at 3.19 p.m., Debbie heads south but her vehicle is found northbound. If we look at the route, it's about 15 minutes from the store, and it wasn't on a main road where her vehicle was parked, but it was just off of the main road, and it was described as a logging road. The incident report states, upon Sergeant Neal's arrival, he observed the vehicle parked in what appeared to be a pull-off that leads to an old logging road directly off Georgia 15 northbound prior to Victory Home Lane. Sergeant Neal was notified by Foster that he had observed this vehicle in the same spot at approximately 1,700 hours on September 10th, 2022, but informed Sergeant Neal that vehicles routinely pull into this area. Foster also advised Sergeant Neal that the vehicle was unlocked and was unoccupied. Foster also stated that he had walked into the wood line a short distance to see if he could immediately locate Collier but was unable to do so. So I found where the location was and I matched it to the photos of what the authorities had on the scene. She would have had to have traveled south and then do a u-turn and backtrack to get to the pullout. Why there, right? Now remember, her phone would already be turned off. Was it just dead or was it deliberately turned off? So now I'm curious, did Debbie stop somewhere around here before she went to the dollar store and that's why there's those unaccounted minutes? What time did she actually leave her home in Athens? That has not been mentioned yet. Now in my last video, I talked about Victory Home Rehab Center and I mentioned how the Venmo amount of $2,385 was very close to the amount it would cost for six months of treatment. It's $475 per month and they do a six month long treatment. So the rehab center is only a minute or so down the road. I have an interesting connection to show you, but first I want to talk about the comments that were in my last video. Many people were talking about this 2385 being very close, if not exact, to what Andrew Ozen finds. But it's my understanding it isn't the exact amount, but I haven't seen uh, the particulars on it. And if it is that, then I do wonder how it connects to this place and where and why Debbie parked in this spot. But I want to show you the connection I've made and what I'm seeing because it goes a little bit deeper. A six month treatment is $2,850 at this Victory Home Rehab Center. Minus the $2,385 Venmo amount equals 465. So it's five months of treatment paid by Debbie, hypothetically, minus this $465, which is a difference of $10 
to make up that 475, right? Are you following me? Type heck yeah in the comments below so I know you guys are. Now here's where this interesting information comes in. And remember I mentioned that it's five months worth of treatment. Andrew was arrested in September a few days after Debbie was killed. And he was arrested for violating probation. In an article, it said this about Andrew. Andrew has a history of domestic violence charges. He was jailed for six days last week, beginning on September 16th on a probation violation and ordered to show proof of substance abuse treatment within 20 days, court records show. He has since been released and was spotted back home Friday. So he was in jail from the 16th to the 21st. And then I wondered, was Andrew supposed to produce this substance abuse treatment uh, record before? So I did a little digging and I checked in his records and in August, he violated his probation. Guess what was on there? It says the defendant failed to report to the Athens Drug Lab in July and August 2022. The defendant failed to report to the probation officer. He failed to pay court fines in arrears of 292.25, and the defendant has failed to pay probation supervision fees as directed, resulting in an arrearage of $135 for a total of 400 and change. And also, the defendant has failed to show proof of treatment for substance abuse as recommended in the assessment evaluation completed on April 27, 2022. This was dated August 25th, 2022. And when he was arrested, it showed must show proof of substance abuse treatment within 20 days. And this was dated September 16th. So this would have been six days after Debbie went missing. So this doesn't look good. Now he had to produce this back in April and he missed it. And you know how long it was since April? Five months, May, June, July, August, September. But Andrew says he doesn't do drugs according to an interview, but according to the courts, he still had to prove it. So there must be a reason why they're ordering him, right? So to sum it up, Andrew violated his probation. It was after April. Everything was okay till April. Then after that, he didn't show up and he's in trouble. And he didn't report to drug testing, going to his point of contact, didn't produce this proof. It doesn't look good, right? Let me know what you think in the comments below. And it just happens to be that Debbie gives almost this full amount of the cost of a six month program, which she gives five months worth. So who had the other month? you know, the other mount. Her van was found right before the turnoff of this rehab center. And it's a men's only facility. Which brings me to my next point. Let's go back to the Venmo message. It may not be a sinister message. They're not gonna let me go because it's a men's facility. Love you. And Andrew just had to show proof, right? So was it just a receipt? Not that he was willing to go into the actual treatment. Therefore, someone had to go in and pay for him. Know what I'm saying? And Debbie's saying she's not going in, but here's the money. And she's at least an hour away from home. So she tells Amanda the keys are in the flower pot. She's not going to be home for a while. After all, it also is game day two. And she was seeing, you know, wearing the dog's gear. And she better hustle because game day starts at four o'clock. Now, I don't know if she was planning on going to the game, but if she is, she's already running late. So why park there in that spot? Why do the U-turn? People would also see her there, so it's not like it's inconspicuous. Did she meet somebody? Someone would have seen something driving by. And it's been said that Debbie met up with Andrew and Amanda the day before for lunch. So was that the conversation during that lunch? I'm gonna ask you to please share this video. Let's have a conversation below. I'm just getting back into things after this summer, which was full of changes personally for me, but I am back, so please share this out. I really appreciate it, and maybe we can get to the truth. Check out my video playlist here on the Debbie Collier case, and also you can check here for the missing minutes in the timeline. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you soon.